from the far reaches of the Milky Way galaxy, it's Retro Nerd Girl with a spoiler-free film review for you. Today I'll be reviewing the movie Planet Hulk, released in 2010. Starring Rick D. Wasserman, Lisa Ann Beely, and Mark Hildreth. Directed by Sam Liu. The synopsis is, the Hulk is exiled from Earth by Iron Man and a few others and accidentally ends up on planet Sakaar. He is then placed into a gladiator arena to fight for his life. My first memories of the Hulk is the TV show starring Bill Bixby, which I enjoyed as a little kid. I thought it was pretty amazing for its time. Over the years, I never really got into the Hulk comics. I um, am actually just a casual fan of the Marvel Avengers. I just, I know about them. Enough to understand who the characters are and maybe their origins, but not knowledgeable about all of their many adventures over the years. After seeing the poster for this movie, I was quite intrigued. Planet Hulk, what a title. I just wondered what it was going to be about. Perhaps this was about a planet full of people who were just like the Hulk, large, green, and angry. I was mainly expecting a very generic story for the Saturday morning cartoon demographic, preteens and teens, based on the trailer. Then with the arrival of Thor Ragnarok, released in 2017, lots of resources hinted that the movie loosely adapted Marvel's comics Planet Hulk storyline in issues of The Incredible Hulk, numbers 92 to 105, from April 2006 to June 2007. Well, at that point, I thought it was time for me to finally see this Planet Hulk movie and discover its secrets. Boy, (laughs) were all of my expectations wrong. I knew that this film was going to be a film involving a gladiator arena, but I had no idea that they were going to be as mature. This is a complete and total surprise for me. Uh, The film really delivers a high tension and at a high threat level from the bad guys in this film. My hands were cold, I was breathing heavy, I had an elevated heart rate, I was concerned, I was worried. Um, I, I didn't watch this movie passively. So to set things up, we see the Hulk arrive on Sakaar and he's placed into this gladiator arena with a group of captives to make a team. Together they're all forced to fight a slew of much more powerful captives because they're being controlled by these chest plugs that essentially uh, turns them into slaves of the higher class, the people who are watching this slaughter basically at the arena. Of course, the Hulk wins many of the challenges, but just when you think that the story can't go anywhere else, that the Hulk has finally won and we can all go home, uh, there's just another formidable challenge right around the corner. And it is some of the most intimidating stuff that I have seen in a very long time. Very cool ideas, very very uh, monstrous uh, elements that they employ to the challenges. And one of the first scenes, they establish a character that is a really cool leader that you expect to be a kind of a mentor character to the others. Uh, His name is Commander Lavin. Uh, The film kills him off immediately in the story. The the, the stakes are extremely high. The characters die in this film horribly. And it's it's not a a cartoon for the kiddies. 
this is something for a more mature art audience that is completely ready for it to be dark and it gets really really dark and I and I think that's what I personally liked about it I feel is one of the key reasons to like this film is for the staging of the action I just found myself thinking wow that's pretty cool that's pretty cool in nearly every scene and it's it's been better than any live action movie I've seen in a long while because you can actually see what the characters are doing you know there isn't a whole lot of blur factor uh, when you're watching the film everything is very crisp and clean if all the action has been drawn out so to speak now it's not cinematic to me at all it really feels like a TV production you can see the same kind of quality on television I mentioned the Saturday afternoon cartoons uh, possibly you know after three o'clock all the cartoons that come on they look a lot like this uh, with so many characters in the film, I felt as if there might have been some really interesting backstories that are not featured in there uh, in, in the film because uh, the ones that were there were mainly to reference a specific part of the story. So you would get a backstory from someone about someone out of nowhere and then suddenly later it would kind of tie into the story. It was a little disjointed there, but it's kind of strange that I didn't mind it so much because I did care about the characters that the movie wanted the audience to care about. I felt really connected to them. The characters that were left out of the backstory weren't any less interesting because as characters should, they all played a part in the current story, be it positive or negatively, you know, such as many characters making stupid moves. And yes, there were characters that made stupid, dumb moves. And it, was, it wasn't to the point where it stopped the film for me because um, the Hulk being as strong of a character as he is really ties this all together for me. Now, the villain in the story is especially noteworthy because he is called the Red King. And he is so nasty that you absolutely hate this guy <laughs> by the end of the story because, oh my God, he, he does so many awful things. You know, I haven't really hated a character this much in a long time. You know, he has no backstory at all. And um, it, he doesn't have any deep underlying purpose to his cruelty other than to get what he wants. And according to the film, he's been doing this since he was a little boy. He looked like his evil deeds alone is all you really need and his creativity to always stay on top of every move that the good guys make you you almost feel suffocated by his intensity and you know I, I say that I hate this character which is great because that's what you want to do with a villain you really want to hate that character so the failures of the heroes really hurt because you know how hard they're trying and you know how hard the bad guys are on top of them so the victories are also earned it's it's be like a beautiful moment when something right actually happens you're just like ah oh. you know it's like almost a breath of fresh air and there are so many jaw-dropping moments that absolutely blew me away the the Hulk was the biggest surprise for me the Hulk is, a, is such a cool character you gotta love the Hulk you know he's the strong silent type a man of few words this story uses the Hulk in the best way that he can be used in a story you know as a gladiator and a hero so he can get out all of that anger and, and it's done in a very justified way. Uh, he communicates excellently, logically, and even wisely. 
I love that because I've always wanted to know what the Hulk was thinking when he grunts. And here you actually get to find out. I really enjoyed the character of Kyra and her character arc, who is an amazing shadow warrior with the power of the old strong. Uh, it's not explained in the film what it all means, but she's nearly as strong as the Hulk and can actually withstand his attacks, which is pretty amazing. I would have liked to know how she had all this power and all this strength. There's really, like I said, a lot of questions that are on the table and they might not have been able to fit this all in one story because it was such a massive tale to begin with. And, um, you know, with my excitement of, of seeing the film uh, for the first time recently, I was really shocked that there were so many people that didn't like the film. But luckily, I discovered that there are just as many people who love the film. And that's how it works, right? You have the fans that rave about how good it is and the non-fans that say, meh, it's okay. <laughs> and I know why. Because I, you know, if you've read the comics, there isn't much that will shock you seeing this film because there was so much left out and even changed to produce the film. And I saw some of the panels for the Planet Hulk comic storyline and Boy, is it magnificently drawn and it took several issues to tell this story. So this film is a massive downgrade from that incredible work. While I was watching the film, I didn't feel the need to know everything about every single character. I just focused on what was on screen and how it related to the story and, and that seemed to work for me. Um, and, and that was my way of enjoying it. So now I am definitely a bigger fan of the Hulk than before I saw this. And I really can't wait to see this again and again. My rating is a 9.2. Well, that sums up my quick spoiler-free review. This is Retro Nerd Girl signing off. Take care, movie lovers. I'm off to my next review.